we stand for? What do we believe? Who will we be? For one, I'd say that we're definitely not race-obsessed communists who seek to undo America's very underpinnings, like the First and Second Amendment, but also replace things like equality, something we were all striving for up to this point, which has now been replaced with equity, which is a Marxist communist concept, something so far left that not even Bernie Sanders supports it. Uh, equality is equality of opportunity. All right? We live in a society we want all people Right. To have whatever color your skin is. Equity, I think, is more a guarantee of outcome, is it not? I yeah, think, I think so. I think that's Okay. Fine. So which do you come which side do you come down on? Uh, equality. Equality. Uh, yeah. Okay. Right. Boys? Well, as you know, equity is really important to the president. Americans of all backgrounds have an obligation to call out political violence that has been unleashed and emboldened. As was mentioned already, bomb threat to this very university. Yeah, those bomb threats weren't part of a white supremacist conspiracy, rather done by some random teenager who we don't even know the identity of. For all we know, it was done by a black teenager, which again, isn't out of the realm of possibility. And what did he mean by political violence? Obviously he means right-wing political violence, because as you're about to see, all that left-wing political violence falls down the memory hole. Stand up against the poison white supremacy as I did my inaugural address to a single out as the most dangerous terrorist threat to our homeland is white supremacy. No. And I'm not saying this because I'm at a black HBCU. I say it wherever I go. But of course, Biden was mostly talking about the sinister, nebulous threat of white supremacy, which of course he never defines. Are we talking about the jailhouse Nazis and gangs that exist mostly in the context of gang warfare and drugs? Or are we talking about a fringe extremist ideology that very few people actually subscribe to? It seems pretty clear to me that Biden, the government, and the media are purposely inflating this threat so that they can smear their political opponents as inhuman monsters. It's a good way to secure one party rule if the population is filled with morons because essentially if you don't vote for a democrat then you're a white supremacist if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or trump and you ain't black i can't speak for everyone but i don't believe in white supremacy and i don't hate people for their skin color it seems to me that's how most people are but joe biden democrats and the media want you thinking that anybody who isn't down with the struggle as rush limbaugh used to say is literally a white supremacist not only is that not true but it's highly dangerous because you're gonna have people out there who are gonna think they're justified in taking action against people they don't agree with because the president is telling them that these people are Nazi threats. But when it does come to racial violence, it seems there's quite a bit more of black on white than white on black. Strangely, these stats stopped coming out in 2019. The FBI stopped putting them out. Apparently, due to what can only be DEI implementations, the data is too muddled now to break it down into anything useful. Now it's impossible to easily pull up this data and prove that Joe Biden is recklessly full of sh They can also spew this white supremacy threat nonsense because they spend so much time covering up left-wing violence. Remember the Waukesha Christmas Massacre? The guy who did that is a black nationalist and BLM supporter and purposely targeted a parade with lots of white people. We were told his motive are unknown. 25 were killed in the Floyd riots alone, mostly black. The terrorist who ran over a Capitol officer in DC was a far left black nationalist, but that was never cited as terrorism. How about the New York City subway shooter, another black nationalist who was on the FBI terror watch list. So of course that story fell down the memory hold, never to be mentioned again. How about that domestic terrorist attack on GOP Senator from a Democrat who worked for Bernie Sanders screaming, this is for healthcare as he shot at Republicans, almost killing Steve Scalia. The FBI called it suicide by cop and the media let it be forgotten. Are you starting to see the pattern here? Or the recent mass shooting at a Christian school with the attacker being a trans person who the media and authorities are now apparently covering for because they won't release their manifesto. Remember back when Islamic terror was more prevalent? We were constantly told that it was nothing but a fringe minority and thinking that Islamic terror was a threat was actually racist. We saw many instances where the media went out of their way to cover up the fact that a shooter was Muslim. Well, now we're seeing the exact opposite opposite response in regards to white supremacy. I also find it odd that these patriot front guys seem to show up right on cue with these race paranoia speeches by Biden. There's a lot weird about patriot front. Most of all, I have to ask, if these people are actual Nazis, why would they openly march and hurt their own cause? All they do is make themselves
themselves look bad and give their supposed political opponents tons of ammo for propaganda. Seems counterintuitive to me. This only helps their supposed enemies. And it seems more than a little coincidental that these guys keep showing up at the exact same time that Joe Biden is giving these race speeches. Oh no. Now I've done it. I've said one of the phrases that's associated with domestic terrorists. Basically questioning the narrative or the government is becoming signs that you're a terrorist. All right, folks, that's all I have for that one. Thanks for watching. If you found it informative, please hit that like button, share, subscribe, and make sure to leave a comment to continue the discussion. Thanks a lot. I'll see you all in the next one.